But first things first, I want to remind you several points. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your mics and cameras off. If you are disconnecting, if you are disconnecting from this meeting, please rejoin by turning off your cameras and your mic so it won't disturb the webinar. If you have questions, drop it down in the chat room. My friends will collect the question for you and I will read it for the speakers. Don't forget to address the speaker. However, if you, uh, we are trying to cover as much as we can as time allow us for 30 minutes uh, discussion session. However, if you have more questions, you can directly send emails to both speakers and they will be happy to answer your questions. Also, don't forget to submit your attendance form. The link will be given to you nearly at the end of the webinar. It is really important for us to monitor your attendance and to send your e-certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also recording this webinar and we are going to post it on our YouTube channel and the link, also the certificates will be emailed to you soon. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, before that, I want to make sure that I am audible for every one of you. So I uh, want, I need some of you to respond to me if I'm audible to you, probably with raising your hand or give me some uh, reaction. Yes, you are. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Chemistry Udana International Lecture Series. I would like to appreciate everyone who is taking your time off from your busy schedule to join us in this webinar. My name is Leah and I will be your host for today. Uh, on behalf of the committee, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend a very special welcome to our keynote speaker who are here with us today. We have Dr. Basrul Haq. Hello, sir, good afternoon. Um, Dr. Hawk, ladies and gentlemen, is now appointed as postdoctoral research fellow in University of Lodz, Poland, taking field in analytical chemistry, membrane technology, solid and waste water treatment, membrane-based separation, and facilitative support. Uh, moving to our next keynote speaker, we have Dr. Fidelis Niti, our lecturer from chemistry department. Um, good afternoon, sir. Good Dr. Afternoon. Fidel Niti, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just completed his doctoral degree in School of Chemistry, University of Melbourne, Australia, taking field in analytical and environmental chemistry and passive sampling. Uh, it's really a big honor for us to have both of you, Dr. Hawk and Dr. Fidel, here as our keynote speaker. I hope you are always doing well. Also, I would like to welcome our head of chemistry department, Mr. Emmanuel Gauru. Good afternoon, sir. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, also, I would like to welcome our Mr. and Ms. Mrs. Lecturers from uh, Chemistry Department, my friends from Chemistry Student Association uh, who put their hard work and time to make this event happen. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome our participants. We have a lot of participants from Kupang, Surabaya, Jakarta, Bandung, and even Australia. I'm sorry that I couldn't mention you one by one, but we are really grateful to have you here. Thank you for joining us. In a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to listen to opening remarks by the head of chemistry department, Mr. Emmanuel Gauru. Sir, time and place is yours. Thank you, Priscilla, for the time. Okay, honorable lecturer of chemistry department, faculty of science and engineering, engineering University. Excellency to keynote speaker, Dr. Bosirur Hock from University of Lodz, Poland and Fidelis Niti, PhD from Department of Chemistry. Uh, welcome to first international series, lecture series. Thank you very much uh, for being our keynote speaker with us today. We are very happy to meet such a great speaker. And thank you very much, Dr. Bosius and uh, Fidelis Niti, PhD for the time, honorable head and our board of chemistry student association, the committee of the event which I'm proud, a seminar participant as well as the respectable. 
Terima kasih atas kesempatannya. Saya mengucapkan banyak terima kasih untuk Bapak Ibu yang telah hadir di tempat ini. Ya. Ini seminar pertama dari Prodi Kimia. Jadi seminar internasional pertama dari Prodi Kimia yang menghadirkan pembicara Dr. Basilo Hok ya kegiatan yang luar biasa ya. dan ini merupakan uh, suatu apresiasi ya bagi kami di Prodi Kimia FST Undana atas kehadiran Dr. Basilus Hauk dan Bapak Fidelis Niti. Ya, jadi Bapak Ibu partisipan dan adik-adik mahasiswa, terima kasih juga yang telah hadir di pertemuan pada siang hari ini, sore hari ini. Kegiatan ini memang kami adakan merupakan program dari HMP ya, Himpunan Mahasiswa Prodi Kimia. Ya, student Association from uh, Chemistry Department. Terima kasih banyak ya untuk Ketua HMP ya, dan seluruh badan pengurus yang telah bekerja keras untuk menindaklanjuti program yang sudah kita uh, ada apa rencanakan uh, dalam tahun ini. Terima kasih juga untuk komite ya uh, panitia yang telah bekerja keras ketua panitia ya Priskila terima kasih banyak sudah bekerja keras ya untuk kegiatan ini bisa dilaksanakan uh, pada tahun ini. Ya. Uh, sedikit ya tentang body kimia karena saya rasa ini semua kebanyakan Indonesia ya. 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 ya jadi, Uh, hanya ya Dr. Bosilus Hawk yang from Ministry of Laws Polandia yang di sini. Jadi uh, the, apa program studi kimia ya uh, sekarang sedang merencanakan untuk mengembangkan kurikulum ke kampus apa merdeka dan tentunya itu butuh apa kolaborasi. Jadi tidak bisa lagi poli kimia itu berdiri sendiri, tapi butuh apa kolaborasi baik dengan institusi, ya industri baik dalam negeri maupun di luar apa negeri. Jadi dengan adanya kegiatan ini kita bisa menjalin kerjasama, ya sehingga uh, tujuan atau visi dari kampus merdeka itu bisa terlaksana. Ya, jadi ini salah satu apa bagian ya. Uh, bagaimana Prodi Kimia merencanakan atau mengembangkan kurikulumnya ke arah ya kampus mereka nah kampus mereka itu ya kampus mereka yang sekarang diprogramkan oleh pemerintah itu ya uh, itu diharapkan nantinya apa lulusan lulusan dari kimia ini tidak bekerja hanya pada bidang ini tapi dia bisa bekerja di berbagai bidang ya. sehingga kolaborasi, kolaborasi antara institusi industri itu sangat penting dilakukan jadi jika ada partisipan dari luar NTT mungkin bisa bekerja sama dengan kami di program studi kimia sekarang ini kami memiliki kekuatan ya dosen sebanyak 20 orang di mana doktornya itu ya lima hampir 50 persen ya, ya termasuk ini Bapak Fidas Niti ya, dan nah, sebagian lagi Bapak Ibu dari eh, Bapak Ibu dosen dari Prodi Kimia sedang studi di luar negeri dan di dalam apa negeri ya. dan jumlah mahasiswa kimia itu sekarang mencapai sekitar 524 orang untuk alumninya kalau tidak salah sekitar 400 orang nah itu gambaran tentang kondisi Prodi Kimia Nah, produk kimia sekarang terakreditasi B ya, dan sedang menuju ke akreditasi unggul. Nah, jadi untuk mencapai semuanya itu produk kimia tentu berjuang untuk menciptakan apa kolaborasi dengan baik institusi-institusi yang di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri sehingga di kemudian hari ya, kita harapkan bahwa uh, 
Polikimia di sini bisa bekerja sama dengan Bapak Ibu yang ada di institusi lain sehingga kita bersama-sama untuk memajukan apa pendidikan khususnya di bidang kita. Ya, jadi ini ya internasional lecture series ini bagian dari kegiatan-kegiatan yang menuju ke program kampus mereka. Baik untuk tidak menyang kata lagi dengan seizin rahmat Tuhan yang maha kuasa maka saya membuka secara resmi kegiatan internasional lecture series yang pertama secara resmi. Baik, terima kasih. Saya kembalikan ke Pusulah. Pusulah, your voice. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I was muted. Um, okay. okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Now, moving along to our next session, we are going to listen to our two speakers today about their knowledge, experiences, and expertise, especially in analytical and environmental chemistry. Our first speaker, Dr. Hark. Uh, we'll talk about application of polymer inclusion membranes for enhanced gold recovery from elect electronic waste. And our second speaker, Dr. Fidel, will talk about polymer inclusion membrane based passive samplers for monitoring environmental pollutants. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to our sharing session, please make sure that your mics and cameras are off so it won't disturb the uh, webinar. So before I start moderating the first session for Dr. Hawk, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that all of you here uh, really want to know more about him. So I would like to invite Dr. Fidel to, uh, to give us a brief introduction about Dr. Hawk. Uh, so Dr. Hi, Fidel, everyone. Sir, I'll hand it to you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hello, thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator, for, for the invitation to introduce our special guest today, Dr. Bosirul Haq, who is an expert in uh, polymeric membrane-based separation technology and membrane characterization. Dr. Haq has just recently been appointed as a postdoctoral research fellow in Lucas Poltora Group, University of Lodz, Poland, whose research was focused on electroanalysis and electrochemistry. But before that, Dr. Haq did his bachelor and along with his master of science in chemistry in Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur which he completed in 2015. Following that, and uh, with his strong performance during his master's study, study Dr. Hack went straight to his PhD in the uh, Department of Chemistry uh, uh, in the University of Melbourne, Australia, where he secured a Melbourne International Engagement Award uh, uh, and Melbourne International Fee Remission Scholarship in 2015 to support his PhD study. Uh, Dr. Haag did his PhD research in uh, development of novel cross-linked polymer inclusion membranes for separation of metallic on, and non-metallic species under the supervision of uh, Professor Sp uh, Spaskolev, which he officially completed in uh, 2020. Uh, Dr. Haag has a very strong record in oral presentation shown by a num the number of conferences he attended during his PhD, among which he is uh, selected as a best uh, oral presenter in uh, the 14 International Membrane Society and Technology Conference, which was held in Singapore back in 2019. Uh, Dr. Haag has also published several articles in highly reputable journal, including one a very recent paper in waste management entitled A Cross-Linked Polymer Inclusion Membrane for Enhanced Gold Recovery from Electronic Waste. So this is particularly what he's going to deliver in his talk today. So without further ado, I hand it over to moderator to moderate Dr. Basirul's, Basirul's talk. Thank you very much. I hand it back to you, uh, Priscilla. Thank you, Dr. Fidel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Hawk for his sharing session about application of polymer inclusion membranes for enhanced gold recovery from electronic waste. Uh, sir, time and place is yours. Should I share the screen or the presentation? Oh, is yes. there? I, I will share the screen uh, for you, sir. Someone will screen it, uh, share it from here. Yeah, okay. 
thanks, thanks, Fidel, for the nice introduction. No worries. Uh, I'd okay. like to thank all the uh, staff and students of the university for organizing this uh, international lecture and inviting me here as a presenter. I'm very happy to be part of this uh, international lecture and very thankful to Fidel again for inviting me here. So move to the next slide. So as mentioned, this uh, the uh, talk title is the application of. Sorry, I think it would be better if I uh, just wait. Who is on the screen? So I'm not able to see all the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, you are. Well, it's better. Was there certain screen? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Would you like to share the screen yourself? Would you like to share the screen, sir? Yeah, I stopped here. Okay, Sir, would you like to share the screen or should I share it for you? No, it, it seems that there's a problem with uh, uh, his connection. Yeah. I'm sorry for uh, some technical issue, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please, uh, we we could probably wait for some time for, for our first speaker, Dr. Hawk, for joining us back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Hawk is now trying to rejoin uh, back in this meeting. Mr. Field. 
Could you give him a call probably? What's yeah, up? I'm, I'm in contact with him now. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, if not, then I can give my talk first. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. While waiting for him. Is he going to be here soon or should we give uh, the first session for you, sir? Uh, let me ask him uh, just uh, quickly. Okay. Well, I think I'll just go first. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are so sorry for some technical issues. Um, our speaker, Dr. Bosser, having some con uh, connection issues. So we are going to give the first session for Dr. Fidel to uh, give us uh, some, to give us his presentation. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I start, um, before I start uh, moderating the session for Dr. Fidel, I would like to give you a brief introduction. I would like to give you a brief introduction about uh, Dr. Fidel. So um, Dr. Fidel, Dr. Fidel Isniti is actually our uh, lecturer in chemistry department, Faculty of Science and Engineering, University of Nusa Cendana Kupang. What is really interesting is that Dr. Fidel is actually uh, the alumni of our chemistry department. Uh, he finished his undergraduate in 2008, then continued his master's degree in School of Chemistry, University of Melbourne, Australia, with Australia Award Scholarship. Uh, and he finished his master's degree in 2014, and then continued in his uh, doctoral degree in a School of Chemistry, University of Melbourne, Australia, with Indonesian Endowment Fund for Education. And he just recently completed his doctoral degree last month. Um, Dr. Fidel, ladies and gentlemen, has also published several articles in highly reputable journals in polymer inclusion membranes, particularly in passive sampling. Also, Dr. Fidel uh, has attended several conferences, especially about passive sampling, which he will present to us particularly today in his sharing session. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite Dr. Fidel to uh, share for us in uh, this session. For Dr. Fidel, time and place is yours. Thank you. Uh, I'll start sharing my uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so thanks, um, Priscilla. Thanks for the moderator for the very kind introduction. Um, so. Um, uh, th and thanks for, uh, I'm, we are sorry for the technical issues, but uh, I'll be starting first. Uh, so um, um, my talk today, uh, no, before before I start my talk, I'd like to first uh, thank the Chemistry Student Association uh, from the Department of Chemistry at the University of Nusa Chendana for having me in the very first uh, international lectureship. Um, uh, I'd also like to um, uh, thank my colleague Bossi, if he is here already, he's in, uh, for, um, uh, saying yes to 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 give us a uh, uh, um, a talk in, in in this very first uh, webinar as well. So uh, my talk today is practically similar to what uh, uh, my friend is Bossi is going to talk. We are going to talk uh, the same thing about polymer inclusion membrane, but it's just basically for different applications. So if my friend Bossi is going to talk about polymer inclusion membrane application in separation of uh, uh, precious metals, I'll be talking about the 
uh, application of polymer inclusion membrane for passive samplers, particularly for monitoring of environmental pollution on no, uh, yeah uh, environmental pollution. Before I start talk, I'd like to give you a brief overview about my presentation, uh, which I simply divided into uh, about six or seven main parts. Uh, First of all, I'd like to introduce you with sampling techniques, and then I'll guide you to, uh, through advantage of passive sampling over active sampling. I will then define passive sampling before I will move on to uh, introduce you to polymer inclusion membrane. And then I'll point out the advantage of a polymer inclusion membrane based passive sampling over the other existing passive sampling uh, devices. I will then uh, show you an example or several examples or of passive sampling device which has a uh, utilized polymer inclusion membrane as part of the devices before I'll finally conclude and uh, 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 mention the acknowledgement. acknowledgement. So let me start with the introduction. So uh, I, I know that you are probably agree with me with if uh, water pollution has now been a global problem and uh, to be able to manage this problem, uh, yeah, we need not only to identify the point source of pollution, but also uh, to uh, to be able to ident identify the type of pollution. And this is where sampling uh, come into uh, in, uh, this is where sampling play a very significant role. Um, sampling is a very first step in uh, uh, in uh, our daily monitoring of our, our water pollution. And because it is a very uh, first, first step, an error committed in this step will mean that our data will be meaningless. Uh, there, are, there exist a number of sampling techniques uh, for monitoring of our water system. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, what is known as uh, discrete active sampling. I know you are probably very familiar with this. This is a very popular sampling technique, which requires one to collect water samples from water site, bring it back to the laboratory performed a sample pretreatment before uh, doing the final measurement and finally generating the data. This technique, although have been widely used, uh, um, has several limitations. For example, uh, in, uh, in a water system with highly dynamic uh, pollutant concentration, it is sometimes uh, intermittent or, or sporadic pollution due to uh, microbial uh, uh, activities or weather changes or uh, deliberate waste uh, uh, um, deliberate waste uh, disposal can be missed, which is shown by the gap in between the red dots here. This problem can be omitted if we could uh, we could increase the, sam uh, the sampling interval or we could apply what is known as continuous active sampling. This is where we apply uh, an auto sampler, which can be programmed to continuously collect uh, a water sample from our, our water, water body. This uh, However, this, um, these techniques come with, with it, its own limitation because an auto sampler is super expensive, which then contribute to the total uh, cost of monitoring of our water system. In the, past, uh, uh, in the past three decades, two to three decades, passive sampling, uh, which is a very uh, uh, inexpensive and very small, has been introduced to uh, uh, compensate for this problem where it can be used to provide what is known as time weighted average concentration, which I will be talking about in a minute about, which is shown by the green line here, which, uh, which can provide us with a, a, a better pictures of our uh, pollution condition of our water system. So this slide here basically shows what's the difference between active sampling and passive sampling in terms of steps, analytical steps performed in the lab and in situ. So as shown by the the, the pictures on the left side here, active, in active sampling, apart from sample collection, most of the steps, including preservation, pretreatment, and analysis are performed in the lab. While passive sampling can combine passively, so no need for human intervention, sample collection, preservation, and part of pretreatment can be done in situ. And this is an advantage because it simplifies the overall analytical procedure. So one can simply collect the passive sampling devices back from the water system and sent the receiving phase for final uh, analysis. So what is basically passive sampling? Passive sampling is basically a sampling technique which consists of the deployment of a passive sampling device over a certain period of time. This device is very small and yeah, inexpensive and, and can, be, uh, uh, can be produced uh, easily. Uh, so 
So what is accumulated in our passive time bank during deployment period can then be used to determine the time weighted average concentration of our analyte of interest. So uh, basically a passive sampling device consists of what is known as inside here is the receiving phase and a semi-permeable membrane barrier. So the receiving phase basically continuously collect the uh, target analytes from our water system while the semi-permeable membrane barrier separates the receiving phase from the sample medium. The accumulation of our, sorry, the accumulation of the target analytes uh, in the receiving phase can occur in two different regime. And based on these, passive sampling device can be divided into those operating in kinetic regime or equilibrium regime. Interestingly, in the kinetic regime, uh, in the linear part, the, uh, the accumulation of the analyte is integrative. And this is where we can calculate the time weighted average concentration of our pollutant of interest, which is which shows a correlation between the total amount of analyte accumulated in, uh, in the passive sampling device to the concentration of the analyte in our water body, which is shown by the, 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 the equation here. So the question now is, is there any commercially available passive sampling device which is reliable? The answer is yes. Uh, there are a number of them, but there are two most commonly used which are presented here. One is diffusive gradient in thin films and the second one is cam catches. So in both techniques, uh, uh, so both passive sampling device consists basically of uh, semi-permeable membrane barrier and a solid receiving phase. So this is where the problem arises because the final measurement of the uh, target analyte using these two, dif two different uh, passive sampling device requires one to elute or to back extract the analyte from the solid receiving phase before being sent for final measurement. Uh, this is a pro this is where uh, the problem arises because it is sometimes a very difficult to achieve complete recovery of uh, the target analytes back from the solid receiving phase, which contributes to the increase of the error of the time weighted average concentration. And it is sometimes that this is this step is required to be performed by trained operators, and it is sometimes time consuming. However, this step or this limitation can be omitted if we can apply a passive sampling device which uh, can involve the use of liquid receiving phase. Why? Because this step can be completely eliminated and the liquid receiving phase can be directly sent for final measurement. This is where polymer inclusion membrane come into context. So uh, polymer inclusion membrane is basically a, a new generation of um, new generation of liquid membranes, which consists basically of a polymer, a base polymer as the backbone, uh, uh, commonly used is a polyphenol chloride or CTA extractant, which can be anionic or cationic exchanger. In this case can be uh, the ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid or DIPA, depending on our uh, target analytes. Or there is sometimes a plasticizer or modifier can be added to, to plasticize the, the, our membrane. So the way we fabricate the polymer inclusion membrane is very simple. So basically we mix all the uh, components together in a suitable solvent until all of the components are completely dissolved. And then we pour the uh, solution, the clear or uh, the super clear solution into a glass ring, which is positioned to sit on top of a glass plate. And we then cover this uh, uh, glass, uh, glass ring with uh, our, a filter paper to slow down the evaporation, which is then uh, result in a uh, very homogeneous and transparent and thin polymer inclusion membrane over 24 to 48 hours. So the polymer inclusion membrane has been widely applied for several analytical environmental purposes, one of which is, uh, uh, is going to be uh, presented by my friend, uh, uh, which is for extraction on, and separation. So. This is where uh, the property of uh, a polymer inclusion membrane is used in passive sampling devices as well. So uh, here, 
So if we have the polymer inclusion membrane separates out two different solutions, one of which containing our target analytes and the other containing uh, our counter, counter anion or receiving solution, what happened is the extraction and back extraction can occur simultaneously on either sides of the membrane. So what happened is the analyte will first bind to the extractant present in the polymer inclusion membrane. The complex will then diffuse onto the other side of the membrane where the back extraction occurs with the counter anion or cation, depending on our target analytes. So this is the properties utilized again. This is the properties again you are utilized in passive sampling device because we can then apply this type of membrane as semi-permeable membrane buried in our passive sampling device, which then separates the liquid receiving phase from the sampled medium. So because the back extraction occurs in situ, minimal or no pretreatment steps are required after, upon the collection of our passive sampling device. Why? Because the liquid receiving phase can be sent directly for measurement. Uh, I will then uh, would like to show you some example of uh, uh, passive sampling devices which utilizes, uh, which has successfully utilized polymer inclusion membrane as, as the semi-permeable membrane barrier. Uh, that I will uh, show you three, three, of, three of the uh, examples. So the first generation of the polymer inclusion membrane-based passive sampling is uh, uh, introduced by our group in Melbourne. And this, for, this is used this is used or applied for monitoring of zinc in, uh, in, in fresh water. And uh, the second one is used for monitoring of ammonia, so in the middle here. And the last one here is my own work, which also are uh, used for monitoring of zinc. Um, I'll, I'll show you briefly in, in a moment. So the, the first uh, polymer inclusion membrane-based passive samplers for monitoring of zinc basically made of a stainless steel, which has an apparatus where, where we can place the polymer inclusion membrane, and it has a cap where we can insert or we can collect the sample. Uh, no, the receiving solution. And this slide shows, uh, sorry, this slide shows the um, schematic diagram of the passive samplers. So what, what we have here is the receiving solution. This is basically the cap. And this is where the membrane being exposed to the source solution when we expose our passive sampling device into our water system. And this is on the right side here is the mechanism how, is, uh, how the, the target analytes, in this case, a zinc accumulated by our passive sampling devices. So basically what happened is zinc is bind to the extractant present in the liquid, uh, the polymer inclusion membrane and then diffuses onto the other side of the membrane or the receiving solution where it will be exchanged with proton. And this, uh, this process can occur continuously until the sampling uh, uh, deplo deployment is terminated. So there are a number of parameters that have, has been optimized, sorry. among which the first one is the polymer inclusion membrane uh, composition, because this is a uh, very crucial. We have to make sure that, that the membrane we use is stable because it will be exposed under very extreme environmental conditions, such as flow pattern, changes in temperature, and growing of biofilm, etc. So this passive sampling device particularly has been optimized and the membrane composition used was 60% weight of polyphenol chloride and 40% diethyl hexyl phosphoric acid, which basically as, act as cationic exchanger. And the receiving solution has been optimized to be 0.1 molar of nitric acid. And they have also studied the effect of matrix interference, where they found that no effect of matrix interference, because uh, it is basically, it is commonly found in environmental water, that sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium are the most commonly encountered uh, cation. And because the mechanism of the uh, accumulation of zinc is a cationic exchange, these type of cations are expected to interfere. This is why this, um, this type of cation are selected in uh, the study of interfering matrix. So what they found is uh, no effect of interfering matrix, particularly for soft water with electrical conductivity Around, around 400 microsiemens per centimeters. So the, after the, 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 the optimization, the passive sampling devices will, uh, 
uh, well done uh, calibrated. So this is where um, we, we, we have the, uh, we did the calibration in the lab. So we'll, we basically have a model of our water system here, outside here. This is a model of our water body, and this is our water system. So we have some zinc in here, and we have the receiving solution inside our passive sampling devices. So what we did is we calibrate the passive sampling device using the source solution outside here, containing different uh, concentration of zinc, as you, see, you can see here. So what happened is we monitor the concentration of zinc accumulated within the receiving phase of each passive sampling devices. So as you can see, with increasing concentration of zinc in the source solution, we have increasing amount accumulation of zinc in the receiving phase. And from here, we can build the correlation between the concentration of zinc accumulated in the receiving phase and those present in our water system. And this will be used for our, uh, for interpreting our result from field uh, experiment. So a number of passive sampling devices were then deployed in a water system and uh, the results are compared to the daily spot sampling. So as you can see here, the uh, black line here shows the uh, average, uh, the time weighted average concentration or the average concentration over seven days obtained from passive sampling device, which is in good agreement with a daily spot sampling. I'll then move on to the second sample of passive sampling device. This is the second generation of our passive sampling device, which has been introduced for monitoring of ammonia in water system. So this is how it looks like. So what basically we have is we, uh, they change the, the, the stainless steel housing with a glass housing, which is uh, super light. And we have on top here, we have a, a cap without a patcher. And the one on the bottom is with a patcher where we can put the, uh, the membrane. So basically what we have is we place the membrane between the Teflon washer and an O-ring. We place it into the cap with a patcher before we screw in the, 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 the glass vessel and then we yeah, insert the receiving solution into our passive sampling device. So this slide here shows the mechanism of how ammonia accumulated in our passive sampling. So again, because the extractant here used is cationic exchanger, what happened is the ammonium will be the ammonia will be protonated and uh, will bind to the cationic exchanger and then the complex will then diffuse into the other side of the membrane where the ammonia is back extracted in exchange with a uh, proton. So again, there have been a number of parameters optimized, including beam composition as shown here, receiving solution, Effect of pH, which they found that there is no obvious effect, which means that the accumulation of ammonia is similar in between the normal pH of our water system, which is between six and eight. And they found that the temperature affect the accumulation. And that's why they have to perform the calibration in uh, different uh, temperature to be able to compensate for the effect of temperature. And they found that uh, the water matrix in this case uh, they, because they studied the water matrix effect uh, using the source solution, not only soft water, but hard water and very hard water as well, because that's what's normally encountered in the environment. And they found that matrix influence affect the accumulation of uh, ammonia, particularly sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And what happened is they calibrate uh, the passive sampling device using a synthetic source solution, which match the composition of the water system. And this passive sampling device was deployed in a stagnant water. So this is the result from the field uh, uh, application. So the red line shown here is uh, the result from the, 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 the concentration of ammonia obtained or determined using passive sampling devices. So this is an average concentration of seven day, which is in a very good agreement with a daily spot sampling shown in the blue dots here. Uh, I'll show you what my own work is. Uh, this is, uh, we developed what is known as a 3D printed flow through device for monitoring of zinc, uh, which is free of environmental effect. As I mentioned before, there are a number of environmental factors which can uh, uh, affect the accumulation of our target analyte. One is the, uh, the flow pattern, because the flow pattern, the 
uh, influence the thickness of water boundary layer formed on the surface of the membrane. That's why if the flow pattern in our calibration is different from the flow pattern in, 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 in our water system, that will introduce an error in the estimation of our uh, flow through device. And, as, uh, and also temperature and water matrix. So this, in, this, uh, in this own work, we are trying to uh, eliminate those three factors using uh, three different approach. So the first one to, to, to eliminate the effect of flow pattern, we introduce what is known uh, as a 3D printed flow through passive sampler. So what we basically 3D printed the flow, uh, flow through device here. So this is the design. So we basically have the same glass vessel. We have a flow through device. We have the Teflon washer and an O-ring. So we basically place the polymer inclusion membrane with the size of this uh, uh, ring. And, and then we place it on, on the chamber. This, this have, has a chamber here. So we place it on top of the chamber before we screw in the glass vessel and then we uh, uh, pour in the receiving solution. So this is where the polymer inclusion membrane sits. So this is the schematic diagram of uh, our flow through device. So basically the water with, uh, will be pumped through here and there, there is a polymer inclusion membrane separate, separates out the, the flowing water from the receiving solution. So we don't study the effect of low pattern. So because we have previously introduced the deep in, this is uh, this is what uh, no is not what I have introduced previously, which is known as the deep in passive sampling. And this one is the deep in, but with silk to protect it from the flow. So we study the effect of low pattern by comparing our flow through device with these two different devices. So what happened is we choose three different flow pattern conditions. The first one is stagnant water, so the water with no moving at all. The second one is we choose a turbulent flow, which is induced by a, a placing this container containing the source solution on, on top of an orbital shaker, which was uh, shaken at uh, 45 RPM. We then uh, study the third um, flow pattern condition, which is a turbulent flow induced by placing an underwater pump. So this is a, a typical an aquarium pump that is used. So we, to induce the flow pattern of, of our water condition. We then, uh, uh, study the amount of zinc accumulated in these three different flow through passive sampling device over five days. And this slide here shows the total amount of zinc accumulated after five days. So what basically happened is in the deep in and silly deep in cases, what you can see here is the accumulation from the three different. So the green one shows the case in stagnant water, blue one is underwater, the one, the, the water, uh, um, you know, the flow pattern induced by an underwater pump, while the, the, the red one shows the, so the results from the flow pattern condition uh, induced using an orbital. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I was out for a moment. Going to a question for the speaker after the second session of sharing. Um, don't worry, we are uh, trying to cover as much as possible and allow us for a 30 minute discussion session. Uh, but before we are start, we are starting our discussion session. Uh, we are going to listen to the second session of. Presentation now. Uh, so the presentation is about application of polymer inclusion membrane for the enhanced cold recovery from electronic waste. So before we start, I also thinking about this um, question, like how many mobile phones, laptop or computer have you used so far? As you are in the mute condition, you will not be able to answer, but think about it. Maybe this number will be like four, five, six, it's depending on you. So whatever we have, this number is counted over here, 15 million tons, the amount that 
EOS we produce each year. So what is EOS? So EOS is this, uh, the electronic uh, devices that we use in life and we throw it up after use. So if you see from these images, this is, a, this is the old edition. So we are not at the moment. So the move to, uh, to the modern technologies. So this old television or old laptop or computer that we are supposed to use at the beginning of this uh, electronic device, we're not going to use this anymore. So all these are, are, are some part of our house or some part. So that's, that's I'm going, to, going to be counted as a EOS. So now why we're concerned about EOS? Because this EOS, if we don't manage it properly, if we throw it as a landfill EOS, then it will leach different kinds of chemicals like lead, mercury, tin, cadmium, hexavalent chromium, polychromic bisphenyl. So all these chemicals are highly toxic and often uh, considered as a carcinogenic as well. So if this component leads to the soil, then it will come to our body through the food chain. So that will be very, very toxic for our health and it may induce uh, cancer in our body as well. So apart from this, this electronic waste also contains some plastic part, which are not degradable. So if you throw these four electronic devices as a landfill waste, then this plastic will remain there and it will cause another type of pollution. And the other concern is about like the amount of waste. So it's growing up every year. It's like more than the uh, normal municipal waste that we collect. So as it's going up, growing up, so we have to still now, if we're using like four types of uh, phone, we can keep it somewhere in our uh, like house. If you have a big house, you can keep it somewhere. So, but the big electronic devices like printing machines, uh, refrigerator, or like old uh, laptop, or, sorry, old computer, we don't have that much space in our house to keep it somewhere in our house. So that's why this uh, US amount of US is going up every year and we need to be, we have to be concerned about it. We, we have to find out some way to tackle this problem. So apart from this side, there's some uh, good points which can uh, also motivate us to do the US, US management because this US not only uh, contain those uh, carcinogenic metals or mm, plastic part, they have also different kind of uh, PCS metals such as gold, silver, platinum within these uh, uh, electronic devices. So it will be good to know that uh, in, in mobile phone, old mobile phones, sometimes we have 397 gram of gold per ton of uh, mobile phones, which is often higher than the gold ore. So if we get one ton of gold ore, we may not get uh, 400 gram of gold from there, but sometimes we can get this from the mobile phone, which have like high amount of gold in there. Also, US management uh, will induce the recycling of the non degradable parts. So, when we collect those mobile phone or laptop or any kind of electronic devices for recycling or for the management, then we will also dismantle all the plastic part and we will use it for the also recycling. So, this will also induce the urban mining. The urban mining is that. Uh, so whatever we have, the resources we have in our society, like uh, so we can use that again uh, and we can recycle that. So that's what is called urban mining. So if we if we uh, move towards the urban mining, that will also uh, reduce our dependency on the natural resources. Most of the things, like most of the metals or any kind of plastic, whatever we want to get, we try to get from the natural resources. But the natural resources is limited. So. If we want, uh, if, we, if we can move towards like urban mining, then that will be also a, a case of sustainable development. Also, uh, if we if we can if we can come up with some scientific management technique that will uh, eliminate the risk of U.S. burning, because most of the non-formal sector uh, who deal with the U.S. they are, or they do they burn burn they. Uh, take the mobile phone or other electronic devices and they burn it to get uh, some kind of metals or pieces metal from there, which also generate uh, different kind of toxic fumes. That's also very hazardous to our health. So we have to come out with a like, scientific technique for the US management. 
And for this, uh, we have aimed to development of environmentally friendly sustainable technique for precious metal recovery. And with that aim, the part of this aim uh, will be like development of cross-linked polymer inclusion membrane for the faster separation of gold. So I'll talk about this today. So with the research that we've done, we just, with, as mentioned by Fidel, that we have published a work uh, on waste management in the title of a cross-linked polymer inclusion membrane for enhanced gold recovery from electronic waste. So I'll talk uh, most about this today. So you have already know what is polymer inclusion membrane, as my friend have already uh, introduced you with that. So I will just introduce it with you uh, differently. So if you, if you know this uh, solvent extraction technique, so this is the very common separation technique that is used uh, in every laboratory uh, or in, in industry as well. This is the industrial technique that we use solvent extraction. So we, we have different uh, layer or on organic layer and, and aqueous layer. So in this organic layer, in this organic layer, we have some uh, extracting agent that can bind with the target analytes. So in uh, polymer inclusion membrane, polymer inclusion membrane is, we can say it uh, that it's just this organic, organic layer. So it's replaced the organic layer. So we can, here we can have this membrane which is made of like a polymer and extractant. So, in this organic layer, we have some organic solvent, but in this membrane, what we do, we hold this extracting agent within this polymeric membrane uh, using some a base polymer. So the transition of this, uh, this technique, solvent extraction to polymer into some membrane, does happen to few kind of uh, like other membrane, liquid membrane, so it, it, which is called bulk liquid membrane, supported liquid membrane, or emulsion liquid membrane. So the transition from solvent extraction to polymer inclusion membrane, that's always associated with some benefit because uh, when you are using this uh, solvent extraction, there's a use of large volume of volatile organ solvent. So that's the paper, uh, this also, uh, because the organic solvent that we use is very much toxic. But, uh, so when we, from this tolerance, when we move to this liquid membrane, so we can minimize the use of uh, organic solvent, but the issue was here is the leaching of the extracting agent. So that's why we cannot use it for a long time. But with the inclusion of the polymer inclusion membrane, so here we can uh, minimize the leaching of this uh, extracting agent. And here also use very small amount of organic solvent. So that was the uh, part of like polymer inclusion membrane. So in my study, we have used three different phase polymer. As you said this from the field talk that the uh, polymer inclusion membrane is composed by base polymer and a extractant. So these are the three base polymer that we used uh, in our uh, in my study. So that was like PVDA, VHFP, PTA, and PVC. So we mixed with these three different extractant on a time. So TIPA, either use TIPA. So Fidel also used this extractant, that extractant for zinc, zinc extraction. I use Cyphos ono 4 and Alpha 36. So in my study, I used this Cyphos ono 4, Cyphos ono 4 for the gold recovery. So I just said uh, in the uh, beginning, that's the, my work is on the cross-link polymer inclusion membrane. So in the normal polymer inclusion membrane, we have only a base polymer and a, uh, extracting agent and sometimes as mentioned by Fidel that there is some uh, plasticizer as well. But in cross-linking uh, polymer inclusion membrane, we use other kind of uh, like polymer or oligomer that is like polyethylene glycol dimethyl acrylate. So it, it, this we call as a cross-linking agent. So in my study, I have tested three different kind of cross-linking agent. That one is called as activated as PDTMA, polyethylene glycol dimethyl acrylate. The other one is fake DVE and uh, N-methyl malamide. So these are three the cross-linking agents. So uh, to induce the cross-linking, that's mean binding between two units, we need some initiator. So we will initiate the polymerization. So I'll show you uh, the mechanism, how it uh, goes in the next slide. So, sorry, not in the next slide, but this is there. So now, so once we mix all these all these chemicals, 
So when you mix all these chemicals in components uh, in a suitable organic solvent, when it's completely dissolved. So in my case, I prepare the membrane slightly different way than Cyril. So he is used the casting for the custom membrane. So I use the casting knife. So we have also cleaned a glass plate, we put the solution uh, inside the casting knife and then drag it uh, and then cover it with the aluminum foil for the slow evaporation of the organic solvent. And in 24 hour, we get a dry transparent membrane, we peel it off from the glass plate. Then this step is for only the cross-linking membrane. So if you only cast a normal membrane, you can end it here. But for uh, inducing the cross-linking, we use, need to do the UV treatment of the membrane. So after the UV treatment, we get a cross-linked membrane like this, a transparent uh, homogeneous membrane. So when you try to do the UV, UV, uh, UV treatment, so before UV treatment membrane is like this, you can say this is the, these are the cross-linking polymers or oligom. And so this, 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 they, they put, uh, when you put this membrane under the UV light, this initiator first break up and they induce the cross-linking. So this one, Connect with this on this may connect with this on so that's how a cross link is produced. So this is this is for the big TMA, it's polyethylene glycol dimethyl acrylate, and we are getting here at, uh, the cross link unit. So different kind of big TMA unit that cross link between each other. So that's is formed within the membrane. So for this study, we used like uh, it, uh, FTIR to monitor the cross-linking process. And we also use the atomic force microscopy to analyze the surface of the membrane. So now I move to the result section. So first how we did, when we prepare the membrane, we had to select a like best initiator. So as I mentioned earlier that we have used three different initiator. So for each base polymer, our first target was to find a optimum initiator, which work better for that particular cross-linking uh, polymer. So in this study, if we see, this is the uh, cross-linking polymer. So in this, this is the double bond that present in the cross-linking agent. So what happened when you do the cross-linking? So this bond breaks and it form a new bond with the next uh, uh, cross-linking agent. So as, so as you move towards like more cross-linking, so we we uh, we uh, we reduce the number of uh, carbon carbon double bond. So that is the predator over here in this FTI spectrum. So when we have more number of uh, C double bond C, then we get this peak. But as it gets reduced, this peak is getting flat. So we can see from this result, this two, two initiator, the TMPA and DAS HFP. So that's two work over here. So from, uh, from this, you can say TMPA is better for uh, big TMA cross linking agent. DAS HFP also work because this was the preliminary study. On the next step, uh, so we did it for the uh, other cross linking agent, big TV. From here, you can see this only the Class HFP, this class HFP that's initiator that only worked and it did the cross linking, uh, complete cross linking. So the moment at the peak at 1617 uh, centimeter in bus, so this is corresponding peak and 1617 bus. So from here, you can say this peak TPA uh, is cross linked by class HFP. So after that, what we did is we tried to find out the optimum amount of initiator. So first we tried to get the, which initiator works. For big team, you can see this GMP and DAS HP, these two works. As, um, which one is better or how much amount we need for each initiator. So we did that uh, screening by using different amount of initiator. So TPR membrane with different amount of initiator or 2%, 4%, 8%, uh, depending on the which initiator we're using. So for in case TMPA would be pair 1%, 2%, and 4%. So always the aim is to use minimum amount of initiator. So wherever we get with the minimum amount of initiator, we try to do that. 
So this is the result that shows this for PPC based polymer. If we use PPC as a base polymer for a membrane preparation, and we use big TMA as a cross-linking agent. And if you use any of these two uh, initiator, DMPA, so if you use DMPA, then the optimum condition will be like 1% DMPA and five minutes of EV treatment. As in big TMA, if you use dash HFP, then this result, our result shows this 4% uh, DMPA is fine, 4%, uh, sorry, 4% dash HFP will be 4% dash HFP and 30 minutes. So similarly, we did it for PEG TV. So this is the optimum condition, 8% dash HFP and one minute, and this for any time by mind. So we did, this is the, this condition shows for the PV space polymer. So next one is similar for like PV based based polymer. I'll not go to the details of this. And the second one is for the CTA. So for all these three based polymer, we use different kind of, uh, Deep uh, electrolysis in the for son of four for different base polymer and cross-linking agent and initiator. Uh, we casted a lot of membrane with this uh, different kind of extracting agent. So from this, which membrane comes is good. We indicate as a tick mark. Other membrane some shows oily surface. So this oily surface means those component. If we mix all those components, it's not a compatible mixture. So that's how you get some sort of oily surface or. Some, uh, some of the component, the organic component is exuding from the membrane surface. That's also caused the oiliness on the membrane surface. In some cases, we noticed high space period formation, which was due to the reaction between two chemicals. So we had to avoid this as well. So in this case, we used only these three membranes. So as I said, for gold, we use cyphoson of four. So we use these three membranes, the homogeneous membrane that we got. So we use this three membrane and oh, we did it. We use this membrane for the separation and extraction of gold. So as mentioned, uh, Fidel mentioned uh, in his lecture that if we use this membrane uh, in between a feed solution and a disciplinary solution, then in the feed site, we have some uh, target uh, target analyte, in my case it's gold. So we, we, feed, uh, we fill this feed part with 100 milligram per liter gold solution at 2.5 molar HCl. And here we had the membrane with cyclosonopur as extractant. The string site for gold, we use sodium sulfate. And uh, this extraction of this, uh, this, this is the transport and transport, uh, transport cell. So from gold from this side, move to the, towards the string site. And we measure the gold concentration using uh, AAS. But when we have a mixture of gold uh, with other metal, then we use it ICPOAS for the measurement. So this is how it works. I mentioned before this, if you have some metal and you have some carrier agent over here, so this metal will bind with this carrier agent and release counter ion. And this complex, metal uh, extractant complex, it will diffuse through this membrane and it will go to the listening site where with the receiving site, chemical that present in the receiving site, it will react with that chemical and release uh, the target ion, the metal, and again, it will degenerate the extracting agent. So this extracting agent again moves to this membrane and it will uh, collect another metal and come back to the receiving site. So this is uh, the general form of cyclosonophore that we present it, and this, this is our gold solution. So this gold solution, they form an adduct with this uh, cyclosonophore, and it find like this. So this on is over here. So this whole complex will move through this membrane, and when it will come contact with the sulfite ion, it will release gold sulfite ions in the first phase in the receiving site. And again, regenerate this uh, cyclosone of food in the membrane. So that's the mechanism. Now I'm going to show you the result. So we, what we did over here, we compared our result with three, three uh, based cosmic membrane that we get for uh, with cyclosone of food. We use this membrane for the transport studies and we compared it with non cosmic So this uh, dot line that indicate the concentration of gold in this site, the feed site, and the solid line 
solid line, this solid line, uh, they show the concentration of in the uh, gold in the receiving side. So you can see with time, the gold concentration in the feed side is decreasing and it's completely decreased by four in, in four hours, in some cases, three hours. So you can see this in the costing membrane that extracted all in three hours. Uh, but it takes four hours for uh, non costing membrane. Similarly, when this uh, gold complex transported through the uh, membrane, you can see the concentration of uh, gold in the receiving side. So this uh, uh, transport of the gold in the through the costing membrane is faster. But you can see this concentration is this this equilibrium within three hour or four hour. But in case of non costing membrane, it took about eight hour or more to this equilibrium. But in this case, uh, the, the green line, you can see this big, big GP and TAS HFP. So this cost cooling polymer, there's an issue, uh, some issue with that because you noticed the reduction of gold. It was present of uh, big TV, which got some reduction of gold in the feed side. That's why this stage is a little bit lower. But we, we move uh, it with this two costing uh, polymer inclusion membrane. So in the so we just did these two costing membranes. I will go back to the slide because so that's how we first initially skin these two uh, two costing polymer inclusion membrane, and uh, there's a lot more step after that. Uh, I haven't showed uh, shown the stage out over here because we need to do this uh, before before we move to the actual application part. What we had to do is like we prepared a solution which has identical acidity. So here we use 2.5 molar uh, ACL solution, but once we move here, so when we digest the electronic part, so this acidity was around six, six molar ACL. So what we, what we did is optimize this membrane, this two membrane, and we use those membrane from the six molar acid as well. So now uh, in this case, we, we take some old mobile phone, we get the electronic part and we, uh, put it uh, in a glass breaker. And then we put some aqua regia solution over here. And we heated the solution. And this, after heating, this all the electronic part that we have over here that dissolved in the solution. And we filter the solution and we put it in this feed, feed solution. So this is our real solution. So we, if we digest all the electronic part, we get this solution. And in the side, in our side, this swing side, we have the sulfate solution, sulfate receiving agent. And here, in between two, two uh, feed solution and the receiving solution, we have the, our membrane over here. So we use this membrane and we analyze the concentration of different metal ion in the feed side in this green, in this green, green solution. And we got this the amount, this is the metal that present. The metal that is present. So you can see this gold is around 150 ppm, but other metal like copper, nickel, they're very high amount, uh, present in very high amount. But the good part is that this membrane, they selectively recover gold. So you can see this other metal ion, the concentration of this metal ion remain almost the same within the membrane, but the gold concentration that decreased. So it took a little bit longer time because we have a complex system over here and also there is iron. So I don't have some um, binding uh, capability with the cyclosono for the uh, um, extracting agent that we have used over here. In real field application, when you do this uh, separation of defined kind of like metal ion or copper of gold, so what, 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 what we can do this, we can separate iron using a magnetic field and you can eliminate the interference of iron. So if we, if we can do that, uh, like as we don't, didn't have that facility in our lab, but it has been done by some other lab, that if we, if we can remove this iron from here, we can get a faster, a faster recovery of gold from here. So you can see from this, uh, it, will, it will not take 25 hours to extract all this gold because if we can eliminate the interference of iron, we can, maybe we can get it within 10 hours, uh, all the extraction and then you can do the recovery also faster as well. So from this result, you can see this, we, we got about 90, uh, more than 90% recovery of gold 
which is very good, uh, of course. So now this membrane, uh, we used it for on time. So it uh, there be like good to have, if we have like more electronic waste, we can also use this membrane for multiple time for, uh, for recovering more gold uh, from this uh, electronic waste. So this is the like primary application. It's a lot of uh, work need to be done over here to get it on the field and recover gold or other pieces metal from the electronic waste. So we also did some characterization, as I said, uh, this we used acrylic force microscopy to do the surface characterization to understand like what happened within the membrane while we uh, doing the cross thinking. So you can see this, this is just we cast a membrane just using the base polymer. So if you induce the cross thinking agent, the big TME and TMPA or big TME dust agent, you can see this roughness within the membrane increases. This indicated by the synthetic scale. So here the surface is very much smooth. So it's the from lower to top part, the uh, height difference is 16 or 17 nanometer, but here it is like 220 or here this about on 14 nanometer. So this is how you can say there's this in, 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 uh, introduction of cross linking agent in the membrane by getting high surface area, which may be one of the reasons of uh, the faster uh, extraction or transport within the membrane. So with all this agile, I'll conclude that both TMP and dust HFP were capable of initiating the cross linking big TMA. And dust HFP is a very effective initiator for big TFE cross linker while DMPA was more suitable for any thermalamide. The crosslink beam separate gold faster than the normal membrane. And PPTFHFP cyphosonophore big team it as HFP. So this composition, composition was most effective for recovering gold from digested aquarium. And optimized team can recover gold from electric and electronic waste. With that, uh, I would like to thank my supervisor, Professor Spas Kolev, Robert Katral, Ines, and Gopakuma, and the uh, University of And I can't put us for this uh, work. I'd like to thank everyone in this event, and yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Professor Spas. Um, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your sharing, and uh, it is very insightful for us. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, now it's the end of sharing session and we are going to the discussion session. If you have question, please drop it in the uh, chat room. So uh, my friend will collect it for you and I will ask your question for the speaker. Um, seems like we have, we already have several questions. Now, the first question, is for uh, Dr. Fidel. It is from Jimmy Andrean, PT Vision East Asia. Good afternoon, sir. Permission ask uh, to permission ask uh, to work in polymer company in the field of eyeglass lenses, and I have problem in terms of thickness. I think how important thickness is in a test, in your opinion, and are there and are there other testing methods to replace it? This question is for Dr. Fidel. Um, thanks, uh, moderator. Uh, uh, I think uh, Dr. Busi can also answer this type of question. Uh, uh, but in but my opinion, if you ask about, about, about how we vary how the thickness, of, thickness the of the membrane, you can easily vary the thickness vary the by thickness the volume. Very volume. Uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if you check, if you uh, check uh, I mean, if you follow my presentation, uh, we drop uh, the way we prepare the polymer inclusion membrane is we drop the uh, uh, the solution of the polymer inclusion membrane into glass ring. So the way you get uh, different thickness is by pouring different uh, of uh, of uh, of, um, of um, uh, the, the polymer inclusion polymer membrane solution. Or if or you follow the, the Dr. Bussi's talk, talk, he has a he more has advanced. advanced uh, uh, Casting knife, casting with, knife with, with different thickness, different thickness where, where you can just easily vary the thickness based on the type of type. casting knife, nice. casting knife, uh, casting knife you used. You used. I think that's from think me. From me, uh, uh, Doctor Busi can, uh, Busi can um, also um, answer that question. Yeah, yeah, that question. Thank you. Use the casting knife to like the thickness of the membrane. 
Yeah, also there's different kind of like uh, okay. So like that. Also, you remember Fidel that uh, in our lab, there's uh, one lady who was uh, kind of uh, named in very low thickness, like around yeah. They, uh, yeah. Low thickness, like lady who very Sorry, on on the surface of the glass plate, then you can also Okay, thank you very much, sir. Now the second question is from Mr. Pius Ola, one of our lecturer in chemistry department. Um, for Dr. Hawk, um, I have tried to prepare the membrane using deep uh, eutetic solvent or DES composed of decanoic acid and tetrabutyl ammonium bromide as carrier. However, the membrane produced was oily and therefore it was incompatible in for separation of metal. Do you have any opinions about this for Dr. Hawk? As I said, this, this problem we also encountered when, when I prepare like different composition, we also encountered with this. So here, we have to do some literature study as well and find out like whether there is some uh, plasticizer because the role of the plasticizer to make those component compatible. So let's find out some uh, type of uh, plasticizer because when I was preparing the uh, membrane with CT as a base polymer, so, and aliquot 36 uh, I sometimes I face this, there's some uh, like white precipitate on the membrane. So when you use those, uh, like when you include uh, some plasticizer within the membrane, so you can get uh, get uh, rid of from this problem. So I will suggest you to find out some good type of plasticizer which can like uh, minimize this issue. Like, so as uh, in case of for oil membrane formation, uh, the only thing is this that if there is some uh, issue with this uh, polarization, so let's say it's polarity of the membrane, so not polarization, polarity of these two components, then, then they will not mix properly. So we, uh, for that, study the polar polarity of these components and try to find out uh, a good plasticizer. I think that will uh, solve this problem. Yeah, I think Thank I can add much, some sir. more. Um, the problem with leaching oh, yeah. is 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 about the problem with leaching or oily membrane is just basically leaching of the liquid part of the membrane uh, outside uh, out of the membrane. So basically, we just vary the composition, uh, find the optimum, find the optimum composition, composition that. that uh, so if you prepare a PIM with a, a high concentration of the liquid membrane, that will result in an oily oily uh, membrane because because. Uh, uh, Liquid uh, membrane will leach, out, membrane of will leach membrane. out of the membrane. So one thing is to vary the so composition. One thing is to vary the composition. Make sure that you don't prepare Make a membrane sure that with you don't prepare membrane very high concentration of liquid. Very high uh, concentration extractant. of liquid uh, extractant. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Now uh, the question. The next question is from Mrs. BB. Also, one of our uh, lab chemistry, Dr. Fidel. I appreciate for the research that Dr. Fidel has done. I am interested with polymer. In your research, are you use do you use several membranes? How do you make the variations of membrane? And how does the PIM, which you have tested, can be used in our environment, especially in Kupang? Um, um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That's a very good question. Thanks. That's uh, a very good question. Uh, sorry. Um, um, sorry. Yes. Um, particularly in my research, I have just used yes, one type. Particularly of, uh, in my research, I have just used one type of uh, base polymer, which is polyphenol chloride. But I know that there are a number base polymer, of different, uh, which is polyphenol chloride, polymer, which but can I be know used. That there are a number of different, which has uh, been mentioned by polymer, my colleague, which can be Dr. Basir. It can be a CTA 
it can be purchased easily. It can be a cellulose tri triacetate or a PVDF or PVDF HFP or new generation of uh, base polymer that we can use. And yes, I think we can uh, also uh, apply the same uh, 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 um, passive sampling devices. Sampling if, if we can prepare, we can prepare the polymer. The thing is just with the polymer inclusion membrane. If we can prepare the polymer inclusion membrane here, which I think we can, then we can prepare the passive sampling devices for monitoring of the same kind of pollution pollutants in our water body. Thank you. I hand it back to you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the qu uh, next question is from Febronia from Environmental Laboratory, Kupang, uh, for Dr. Hawk. The question is, how PIM compare to other methods in goal recovering from e-waste in terms of resource use, uses or uh, water generation during its process? The question is for you, Dr. Hawk. This uh, uh, the question is from Georgia or from Fabronia. Okay, so this is the question How PIM compared to other methods in gold recovering from US in terms of resource uses or waste generation during its process? Yes, sir. Yep. So so as I mentioned this, when, when we drive, it's, it's not only about like we're using as uh, uh, electronic devices and we're looking the gold. So we have to have a plan of waste management, not only recovering gold, it's a part of the project, waste management. So when you when you project, we have to have a policy for the last part. And uh, we have to have this, like when you do this, uh, acid treatment or something like that. So that also create some waste. That must create, generate some waste. So because this is the part, this is the membrane that is showing that we will do the gold recovery. But there is some other part of it because we have to also minimize the use of uh, like acidic, acidic uh, chemicals for the leaching because there is a lot of other work also going on to discover the new leaching agent like bio leaching agent or different kind of like organic uh, organic acid, like as you know, the citric acid or malic acid. So different kind of this organic acid component that can also be used uh, for as a leaching agent. So that that don't uh, like generate new waste. So that's how you can minimize the degeneration of the waste. And for the other part of the uh, component, we have to have policy for that as well. So we are not just going to set up uh, a facility for the gold recovery. Have a proper for the US I think, yeah, if I right, I think it's the answer from my side. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the. Uh, thank you very much. much. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Now, the next question is from Gregorius uh, for both Dr. Hawk and Dr. Fidel. Uh, the question is. Do you think PIM can also be applied for industrial water treatment or wastewater treatment process in which the flow rates and pressure of water is much higher? I will give the first uh, to answer for Dr. Fidel. Well, well um, um, in our lab, um, they have they developed, developed uh, polymer membrane, membrane, membrane in a very in small, a very pilot small pilot project. project. For the separation for of the separation uh, cyanide, of, uh, cyanide from the mine from tailing, the which I mine think, tailing, which I think very close to industri industrial waste water, very close to industri and they industrial manage waste to, water. Um, and they this manage is just to, a, a pilot project. So, um, but this is they just can a, just a pilot from project, there they can so. just build up. They can just scale. They it up. can just so from there they yes. can just build up. They can just scale it up. So I think yes, I think it's yes. possible. I think yes, it's possible. Okay, uh, Hawk and Dr. Fidel. So the next yep. uh, to answer is Dr. Hawk. Yeah, this uh, I think uh, I agree with Fidel. This this can be used for uh, water treat moist water treatment and the uh, in the industrial scale. So that's that's the aim of the work. work. Like uh, from the polymer inclusion membrane, we're trying to get more stable membrane using the cross linking approach. So there's a different approach uh, that has been like taken. 
So cross thinking is one of that to make this memory more stable. So we can use it for multiple time without losing the uh, extracting agent. So as Fidel mentioned, this is already in, uh, in the field study. So we're starting in that in the field. So for it will be like, it's not in the, uh, uh, as commercial available as, uh, till now, but hope when we get rid of all this like uh, leaching of this extracting agent with this like cross linking effect or some other uh, other effect so then it will be obviously useful for the industrial waste, uh, waste of a treatment as well thank you very much sir uh we have some uh, we have some more several questions here uh, i think there are a lot of excitement uh, the next question is from uh, Mr. Rayner, also one of our lecturers from chemistry department. Um, first from uh, Dr. Fidel, how about the other group B metals such as iron, CD, CR, or uh, etc. interference we, uh, which are commonly present in real industrial wastewater to your, to your selective and exclusive ZN and PIM extractant? Do they, do they will affect your passive sampling results? Um, yes, uh, um, thank you. Um, thank you. That's a very um, great, that's a very great. Um, um, I think yes, think but yes, they present, but they present our environmental water, water environmental very water low in concentration. Very low concentration. So the effect so is not very obvious. It's not very obvious compared to other metals such as sodium, other metals, potassium, as sodium, magnesium, and potassium, potassium, because those are the and calcium because encounter. those are the ions found in, in environmental water. Cations found in environmental water. Yeah. But I think we can easily uh, we can easily modify our okay. uh, uh, receiving solution to target for different uh, uh, ions, or we can collectively measure them together. Yeah, like iron and zinc, we can apply them together because basically the, the mechanism is cationic exchange, so we can uh, do them together. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now the next question that also from Mr. Rayner is from uh, is for uh, Dr. Hawk. The question is: Did you also uh, try tried using non-cross-linking beam for extraction extracting gold? Uh, was it about high acid stability performance of the cross-linking beam over aqua regia solution of your e-waste? Yeah, uh, we did use like when you, when you uh, use costing membrane, we have also prepared a non-costing membrane to compare the result. So non-costing membrane before, before I uh, used this membrane, there's a lot of things done in our lab about the non-costing membrane. So in that case, we use the non-costing membrane uh, for the gold recovery as well. So our aim was to compare the cost of the non-costing. So as mentioned this, if you want to get it industrialized in the, uh, in the normal field application, then two, two things we have to uh, like maintain this. The extraction should be faster so that we get the gold very quickly. And also it has to be stable so that we can use this membrane like, for longer time. For the non costly membrane, yes, there is a study. So it also can uh, like, uh, recover gold from the uh, solution. But when you use costly membrane, so that also does make the process faster and it also more stable in, in a collagen solution compared to the non costly membrane. Thank you, sir. Um, now we still have more questions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, from Fabronia from Lab LH Kubang to Dr. Fidel, the question, uh, do your any research indicate the maximum water flow required for PIM applications in the riverine, in the riverine system? Uh, do PIM more effective for monitoring wastewater or, or clean water? Uh, any comparison related to accuracy and precision between PIM and conventional water sampling techniques? Um, have PIM been developed in water quality monitoring in Indonesia or Kupang? I think I think you can answer some questions first because uh, I think there's like <laughs> there's the, five or there's six too many. The, the one that I remember uh, um, is PIM or is PIM applied for monitoring of of uh, 
I, 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 I don't quite remember. That, there's mm -hmm. too many questions. Can you repeat um, that, the last one? Okay, the last one. Um, have PIM been developed in water quality monitoring in Indonesia or Kupang? Oh, okay. 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 Uh, in that um, case, I think there's think there still no. No, but in, in, in Australia, yeah. where we develop, that, that's, uh, if you follow my presentation, the second generation of the passive sampling devices mm -hmm. has been applied in uh, monitoring of uh, our water system, has been used commercially. And that's, that was used by uh, Water New South Wales, where we are in partnership of monitoring of ammonia concentration in Sydney, where I, I was uh, uh, in, involved, in, involved in, yeah. So yes, um, but we can, we can do it, we can do it here. Yeah. Um, and the next, sir, do PIM, ha uh, do PIM more effective for monitoring waste water or clean water? Hmm. Waste water or clean water? I think uh, <laughs> that's, um, I think we can apply for both. I think we can, we can apply for both, but depending on how, how, uh, I mean, how, Pull your waste water. If it's muddy and full of everything, then it's best to apply it just for our environmental water. Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, any comparison related accuracy and position between PIM and conventional water sampling technique? Um, yes, we did some comparison. As I'm, I've shown before, we did a comparison with continuous active sampling. Oh, uh, no, with uh, discrete active sampling. And we I think some of the group, not our group, I haven't, I haven't present, uh, I didn't present it in my uh, my presentation, but there is some group that did the same thing, but with the comparison to continuous active sampling. So discrete active sampling is where you collect the water, you bring it back. Continuous active sampling is where you install an auto sampler and the auto sampler can be programmed to collect your water sample every, for example, 30 minutes or one hour and you can just collect the water samples from your auto sampler and uh, analyze it. So yes, we did, we compared it. And there, there was a good agreement between the result obtained from our passive sampling devices to, to, to the conventional active sampling. So yes, thank you. Okay, now the last one from Ms. Peveronia, Dr. Uh, Fidel. Uh, if we would like to use it from our uh, water quality monitoring, any suggestion, how can we start it? Any technical or management aspect should we consider? I think the first the first thing we do is we need to compare with what we have here. If if we have uh, like discrete active sampling, then the first thing is we have to compare it because it's not easy to apply such a new technology in, in, in this country where everything yeah. has to follow the rule. Yeah, yeah, I think we have to but we can compare it. We can start from making a comparison in a very, very like, uh, I know that, I know that the uh, environmental lab in every regency or city, they have a, a like regular monitoring. Uh, I think if we can do a, any collaboration in the future, we can apply uh, our passive sampling device at the same time with the re regular regulator monitoring using continuous uh, uh, or discrete active sampling. And then we can find out the result later as a proof of concept at least yeah thank you thank you very much sir now the next question is from miss february to dr hawk is there any possibility of developing a natural vegetable oil based polymer to replace peg as a raw material for pim this is a good idea like there's all a chance to get some um, polymeric Component from the vegetable oil that will be good, of course. Just as a, just a, there's always a chance because if you, if you can think about it, then of course you have to facilitate get the facility and you have to test it, try to extract this uh, chemical, this polymer from this vegetable oil, and then you can use it. You can test it. You can test it in the membrane whether it's compatible or not. So yeah. you can you can get some some component from the uh, vegetable oil, but then the next step, uh, step will be whether it will be compatible with the membrane component or not. That's right. So of course, if you can get, then you can use it. I, I can add some more. I think alternatively, in, in, instead of uh, replacing the base polymer, we can use the component from uh, vegetable oil or the or, or coconut oil or, or or something else to replace the liquid extractants because I think there is some. Uh, 
component in the, the, the oil, which can bind nicely to the, the, the cations or whatever our target analyte. So yes, we can replace some part of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now the next question is also for Dr. Hawk from uh, Ms. Fernanda. The question is, how pure is the gold produced by your method? Do you think the results you get uh, are, are satisfactory? Could there be a weakness with the method you are working with? I mean, could there be any flaws with the method you are using? Thank you. The question is for Dr. Hawk. Yeah, this gold, this gold is in the solution. It's, it's a like sulfate salt in the solution. So we didn't take the solution to get the pure gold or so. You can you can treat the solution. You can treat the sulfate salt of the gold, and then you can get uh, gold from there. And uh, I think even from this gold is no gold is pure. It's pure is, is gold is not there. There's always some impurity that make it more stable. And to talk about the flaws, uh, like I will not take it uh, consider it's flaws. It's like there's more opportunity to develop it over here. Like as I mentioned over here, this uh, when you use the proper sample, like normal sample. Of a digested aquaricia, so it took a little bit longer uh, because there's a patent of iron. So if you can eliminate iron, we can get it faster. So if we, if we can like if, uh, eliminate more interference, that will, that will make the process faster. And 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 we can like if we if we talk about this first, then then we can eliminate those first. But I think uh, I'll not say this first, but we try we try I always try to do our experiment in like more accurate way as possible. Depending on our like situation lab facility. So if we if we do uh try if we uh like set up the uh experiment differently we can do that and we can get like uh result uh different type but the result that we have got is, is there's no flaws like in our experiment we did it uh, uh as good as possible. But of course, there is some uh, point that you can improve. Yep, okay, thanks very much, sir. Um, there, there are a lot of questions, but uh, we are running out of time. So one last question from Mr. Pius Ola for uh, Dr. Fidel. Did you check the stability of membrane after use? That's an excellent question. Um, uh, ex uh, stability is, a, is an important factor when you when we deploy a passive sampling device. Not only uh, that um, the the type of passive sampling device that we we introduce, but other type of passive sampling devices. So yes, stability is very important. And in our in in my work, I have used uh, um, a polymer fusion membrane which has been optimized in terms of stability. But yes, I did check the stability of the membrane after field deployment and I find that it is, uh, I mean, it, it's still very stable. I mean, I, I weigh the, 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 the membrane before and after and from there I can uh, point out that there is no leaching of, uh, of a membrane out of the, the, the membrane. Yes, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now that was the last question. I'm so sorry. It's uh, we are running out of time. I, I know that all of you guys still want to ask more questions, uh, but we have to stick with the time. So please, if you have more questions, you can directly send emails to both speakers, and I believe they will uh, be happy to answer your questions. Um, my friends will send uh, the speakers' emails in the chat room. So if you have more questions, please uh, just uh, directly send emails for uh, the both speakers. Now, um, with the end of the discussion session, uh, we hope this web uh, this webinar would be beneficial to all of you. We get knowledge, new insights, and I hope even uh, some motivation and inspirations for your researchers, education, and many more. Thank you very much for our both speakers. Now, moving along to the next session is the certificate submission for uh, both speakers. Um, we want you to know that we are, we really appreciate both of you for being here as our speakers, especially in this uh, very first international lecture series that our chemistry student association has ever held. So it left a really, really deep impression for us also to learn from this. 
to create something beneficial and educational in the future. Thank you very much for both of our speakers, Dr. Hawk and Dr. Fidel. Now, uh, first, I would like to present. I would like to. Okay, I would like to present uh, the certificate of appreciation for uh, first for Dr. Basirul Hawk. Thank you very much, sir. Please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, give some response, give uh, uh, virtual applause or even love or even a thumb up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. This is Thank our first meeting, you. but I hope. Thank you. Um, this is our first meeting, but I hope, we all hope that it won't be the last. Uh, maybe one of us one day can apply to your workplace or maybe be in your research team or um, even maybe we can invite you to Indonesia to visit our department. We're going to ask some help from Dr. Fidel. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hawk. Uh, and the next uh, certificate of appreciation is presented to Dr. Fidelis Niti. Uh, thank you very much for sharing with us today, sir. Please give some response, give some uh, big applause, virtual applause, some love or thumbs up for Dr. Fidel, for both of our speakers for their uh, amazing, wonderful, great uh, presentation today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, now we are nearly at the end of the webinar. Um, as what I said in the beginning, that you have to fill and submit your attendance form. Uh, my friends will give you the link. Uh, my friends will give you the link on the chat room. Uh, please fill and submit it. It is really important for us to monitor your attendance and also for us to um, send you the e-certificate and the YouTube uh, and the link for the YouTube channel for the, this uh, meeting recording. Okay, you can see the attendance link on the screen. Also, my friends will uh, send you the attendance link. And also, ladies and gentlemen, I would uh, happily announce that our second international lecture series is coming very soon in July with one of our keynote speaker is Dr. Joseph Nathanael. Now he has been appointed as postdoctoral research fellow in University of Melbourne, taking field in physical organic chemistry. So please stay tuned in our social media so you don't miss this special opportunity. Now we also want to take some pictures. My friend will take uh, some pictures for us. So please turn on your camera and pose for the camera so my friend can take picture for us. Okay, turn on your camera in three, two, one. Another pose in three, two, one. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With that being said, we are already at the end of the webinar. Please make sure that you did submit the attendance uh, form. We're going to open the form for um, the next 15 minutes. So please make sure you fill it, you fill and submit it. And from here, I want to shout out to my friends from Chemistry Student Association who put uh, their time and hard work for this event to be happen. And please keep this hard work for our next events and our next webinars. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Dr. Hak, Dr. Fidesmiti. It's a great presentation and inspiring talk for me, for, for us. Uh, so our appreciation on, have, on behalf of our participant here. Thank you. I hope I hopefully you'll enjoy in event. Maybe we meet maybe we can meet again. Thank you, Dr. Basilius, Hak, and Dr. Fidesniti. You're welcome. It is our pleasure to be here. 
Thanks bos ya, thank you so much. Stay safe. Okay. Halo Mr. David Tambaru. Hey, halo. Thank you for our participant. Thank you. Committee and lecture of chemistry department. Thank you very much for attendance. Yes, this is the brilliant idea. So I support this. We'll see you next. Okay, thank you, Mr. David. So, Priscilla. Yeah, Pak. I think I'm gonna leave soon. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Pak. Okay. Everyone, after you fill your attendance form, you can leave the meeting if you have another schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for hosting this event. Yeah. No worries. It is a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here also. Uh, and thanks. I hope to meet you again. And yeah, sure. I hope you answered all the questions. If you, anyone have any questions, please send uh, me an email. Yeah. I'll be really happy to answer all these questions. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.